Hello everyone, this is Felix from GM Wolf. Today I want to start a series of videos on creating 3D terrain using Game Maker Studio. In this first video we will look at how we can create a simple 3D terrain based on a height map using vertex buffers. Before we delve into the deep end of the code, let's first look at how 3D works in Game Maker. In order to display a 3D object, also called a mesh, Game Maker will need two things. The first is the mesh itself, and the second is the camera. You can then also include textures, shaders, etc. in order to better define how your mesh is displayed. A mesh is made up of triangles, and triangles are in turn made up of vertices. Therefore, in order to define a mesh, we need to define a series of vertices. To do this, we will use vertex buffers, which are a zone in the memory dedicated to holding vertex information. These can hold the position of the vertex, as well as texture coordinates, used to map the texture onto the mesh, normals, generally used for lighting, and any other information you choose to include to achieve the desired effect. The camera represents the point of view, that is, its position, its direction, the field of view, and a few other parameters. This information will be used by GameMaker to transform the vertices defined in your mesh from world space to screen space before drawing the triangles onto your screen. So now that we know how 3D objects are displayed in GameMaker, what do we need for a 3D terrain? First is a height map. This is generally represented as a black and white image, where dark regions are lower and light regions are higher. The advantage of using a height map is not only its simplicity, but it is also easy to preview what the terrain will look like just from looking at the image. In order to represent this height map in 3D, we'll use a simple technique where a square mesh is divided in a grid manner and the vertices are heightened based on the height map. The main advantage of this is the simplicity behind the code required to generate such a mesh. However, it does come with a few drawbacks. The mesh density is rather consistent, meaning that low frequency areas will have just as many triangles as high frequency ones, making for a very unoptimized mesh. Another problem is related to textures. Steep slopes have a tendency to stretch out the texture. This makes this type of terrain less suitable for first person point of views. In a top down point of view, however, this isn't much of an issue as the mesh tends to be low density and the textures won't appear stretched from that point of view. Now that we have a basic understanding behind how our terrain will be generated, we can start working on implementing it within GameMaker. To do this, we will first have to import our height map into GameMaker as a background. We will also create a texture that will be mapped onto our terrain. Don't forget to check Use for 3D in order to keep the texture coordinates between 0 and 1 for this texture. We can then create our terrain object. In the create event, we define a couple of variables. The first is called height buffer. We set it to no one. This variable will be used later to store height information as a buffer. It will also be used to check if the model has been created. The next variables are the x and y divisions. This will represent the number of vertices in our mesh. We set both of them to 200. This will incidentally also be the dimensions of the terrain. The terrain can later be transformed to match our needs. The variable after that, terrain height, will store the maximum height of the terrain. Finally, texture repeats represents how many times a texture can be mapped across a terrain. The next step is to create a vertex format. This will determine what data can be stored in our mesh to represent our data. We start by indicating we are defining a new format by calling vertex format begin. We then use vertex format add position 3D and vertex format add text chord to indicate we want to use 3D positions and texture coordinates in our vertex buffers. Finally, we add the variable vertex format and set it to vertex format end to indicate we are done creating our format and we would like our newly created format to be stored in that variable. All we now need to include is a variable for the texture that will be mapped across our terrain. We use background get texture to get the texture information from our background. In order to get data from our height map, we will first have to store its data in a buffer. This will make retrieving data from it very fast, reducing both loading times and lag. To do so, we must first draw our height map backgrounds onto a surface. This is only possible in the draw event. This is where the bulk of the terrain creation will take place. In the draw event, we check if height buffer is equal to no one. If so, our model has not yet been created. We get the dimensions of the height map background and create a surface of the same size. We set our surface targets, draw our background, and then reset the surface target. Now we can create our new buffer. 
The size of it will be the resolution of the surface multiplied by the memory used by each pixel, in this case 4 bytes, plus 8 bytes used to store the dimensions of the surface. The buffer will not change size and the type of data we will store are 8-bit integers, so the type of the buffer will be buffer fixed and the alignment can be set to 1 byte. First we will write the width and height of the surface onto the buffer. Then using buffer get surface allows us to copy the data from the surface to the buffer. The first argument is the buffer we want the data on. The second is the surface we want to copy the data from. The third represents the data we want to copy. As of now, the only mode available is zero, where all the data is copied. The next two arguments represent the offset for all the data and the offset between each line of data. We're going to set the first to eight to avoid overwriting our dimensions and the second we set to zero. Now that we are done with the surface, we no longer need it and so we delete it. Before we go any further, let's have a look at how the data was stored in our buffer. Buffers have a one-dimensional layout whilst textures are two-dimensional. To accommodate this, GameMaker will store each column of data one after the other. The data stored on the buffer is in BGARA format, that is, four unsigned 8-bit integers will be written to the buffer for each pixel. The first three represent the blue, green and red components of the pixel, and the fourth represents the alpha or transparency of the pixel. This is useful because it allows us to create scripts to get the color value at any point simply by reading the first 8-bit value of the pixel as in a black and white image it will be equal to the color value. We create a script named buffer get height. This script will take in three arguments, the buffer to read from, the x and the y position to take the reading at. First we determine the height of the buffer by reading a 32-bit float value 4 bytes along our buffer. Next, we use the x, y and height variables to determine how far along the buffer we must read in order to get our height information. To do so, we first take our y value, add our x value multiplied by the height to offset along the x-axis. This gives us the pixel number. We can then multiply this by the size of a pixel, 4 bytes, and add our extra 8 bytes used to store the width and height to get the offset to read from. We then read a 8-bit value from that position, which represents the blue component of the pixel, and return it. This script can now be called at any time to get the color value of the surface stored on the buffer at any given x and y values. This new script is going to be used both to get the height of the terrain in order to make them mesh, but also when moving objects around on the surface to keep them on the ground. The next step is creating our vertex buffer. We go back into the draw event. We initialize a variable, vertex buffer, and set it to vertex create buffer to create our new vertex buffer. We then call vertex begin, with the first argument being our newly created vertex buffer and the second our vertex format to indicate that we have started building our mesh using our format. We then use a nested for loop to loop through every x and y divisions but the last row and column. Through every iteration of the nested for loop, we will create one grid square. Therefore, we need to get the height values of the point we are on, the point to the right of it, the point below it, and the point to the right and below it. We first calculate how far along the background we are for two opposite corners of the square. We can then get all four corner coordinates from these. We then get the height of each point using the script we previously created, and multiply it by the maximum terrain height before dividing it by 255, the maximum value our function will return. We now get the texture coordinates by multiplying our texture scale by our current position divided by the size of the terrain. Now we can define our triangles. Each grid square is made up of two triangles. This means we have to define six points. The first triangle will include the top left, bottom left and top right vertex. Make sure you define them counterclockwise to get them facing the right way. For each vertex we call vertex position 3D and vertex text chord in turn. We then define the second triangle. This one includes the top right, bottom left and bottom right vertex. Outside the for loop, we can call vertex n to indicate we are done building our mesh. We now have a vertex buffer with a square grid with vertices elevated in the z-axis based on our height map. All that's left to do is to submit our buffer. This can easily be done in the draw event.
add an else statement to the draw event to check if we did create our buffer. Submitting our vertex buffer is done by calling vertex submit and passing in three arguments. The first is the vertex buffer, the second is the primitive type, we used a series of triangles, so PR triangle list is what we will use. And the third is the texture to use. The final step in displaying our terrain in 3D is to set up the camera. To do so, we are going to create a new camera object. Set its depth to 10 to ensure it is drawn before our terrain. In the create event, we call D3D start to set the projection type to 3D. We then set a few parameters, such as its X, Y and Z position, its target point x2, y2, and z2. The target point is used to determine the direction of your camera. We then go into the draw events of the object and call d3d set projection. This code is what determines the 3D point of view. The first three arguments are the camera's x, y, and z position. The following three are the target point x2, y2, and z2. We then have to determine the up vector for the camera. This allows us to roll the camera around. In our case, the up axis is the Z axis, so we simply put 0, 0, 1. We need to create this object after the vertex buffer has been created, so that the 3D projection does not interfere with the drawing of the background onto the surface. So back inside the terrain draw event, as the vertex ends, we create our camera. Now place a terrain object in a room, and you should be able to see your terrain in 3D. That's it for this part of the tutorial. Next time, we'll look at how we can light our terrain, so if you want to see that, please like this video and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time for some more Game Maker tutorials.